2004 Honda Accord, 208,000 miles, I do believe. But the motor runs good. Quite a bit of rust in the back half of the car, which for a car 20 years old now, that makes sense. But we think she is solid. We think it is a good stock derby car, and we're pretty excited about it. Uh, up front, the wheels are pretty clean and a unique setup. And uh, we think she's going to tear it up. And just a quick look under the hood. Again, a lot of miles on the motor, but still runs good, roadworthy, I would say. So we're going to tear into her. A stock run, so not too much changed up front. I'm going to removing all the cosmetic stuff, slightly range around some stuff, bringing the battery in to the car. But uh, let's get into her. So just a quick little update here. Even though we're months away from the Derby, we've got the front plastic off as well as lights and the uh, front kind of grill there had a guy saying he was interested in that yeah i got the uh, front off nice to have a clean space uh, a little tricky with these lights you know like anything 20 year old car they're rusty uh this one came off pretty good just had to figure out where kind of the puzzle of where everything is this one you can see we got a little hanger there uh the back of them sometimes break off or come loose and there's no way to get to it so the bolt was just spinning there so. yeah just look i uh, got the front pretty much done again a couple uh, tidying up up front this uh kind of airbox bottom here is sitting pull that out as the cat rooms in uh, and we'll finish up for today and get into it later but looking good so just a quick look as we are back inside on a beautiful day we are going to start taking off the cosmetic rest of them the mirrors the inner door panel the windows the seats take all that out uh, the front bumper we're going to pop off now. Had a guy uh, wanted that, so sold pretty cheap. Make a little bit of money back. Inside again, the battery box. Battery, that old battery's junk. Anyways, pull that out. The air box, I believe we can get rid of that, but we'll see. Uh, but we're just going to start diving into the cosmetics. Got her up in the stand here, so here we go. Diving more into it. So taking a look at our progress, we have got most of the cosmetic things taken care of inside. So again, the door windows the inner door panels the seats passenger rear seat carpet here i'll cut uh usually i've just been cut right up to that center console don't take that out you don't need to uh and then yeah that's pretty much it inside trunks all emptied out again with your wiring if you're not someone that's running your own wiring or you're someone that's kind of new to derbying i just simply unplug everything behind the motor even in front of the motor i don't cut anything i just unplug it uh, as i unplug a different amount of things whether it's headlights things like trunks or sensors etc as i do that uh, i haven't done it yet but your airbags which of course always make sure you have no power uh, for at least a couple minutes from the battery before you tinker with those but just unplug them check them out or i should say start the motor up to make sure everything checks out and then, yep, she runs good. She's not in some sort of limp mode or won't start at all. Continue as you were. So, again, uh, pump muffler underneath I cut. I'll get it off the uh, jack stands up front. We're going to next get the hoses taken care of for the transmission. Again, you got to loop them so that you get punched in the radiator. You're not going to lose that. So, there's one going in, one going out. And see right here are the two. Probably right there is where... I'm going to loop shortly after that, so that way that's out of the way. And then we'll take her off the stand, uh, cut the back of the muffler out. And the tank I'm going to look at again, it's kind of interesting. The tank seems to be sitting on like a, kind of like a, a skeleton of sorts, and it's not just straps, which is what most cars have, just two straps. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, might have to cut those straps out. I hope nothing more than that, because we are going to drop the tank. So... Sunroof's out, cosmetic stuff's out. We're gonna get a little bit more technical now. So just a little update here as we're gonna stop and you can see there is our fuel line, get it to focus, our fuel line, our uh, transmission line rather, again looped and uh, got it clamped down good. I have a zip tie just kind of holding it again back so that it doesn't, if the front end gets slammed around, it's not gonna be in danger. I have the fuel line on my mind because the Honda Cords, I didn't know until just now, right there's the fuel cell, which you can access from, I mean, just once you pop the seats out in the trunk there. However, the tank has like a cage of nonsense built around it, and you have to literally drop like the whole rear end to get the tank out. So 
Not sure what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave the tank there. Shout out to Derek Head, was talking with him and he said, no, we always leave the tanks in there. We just drain out the fuel. But I need that fuel cell for my derby tank. So possibly be able to cut around enough to use it, but then I can't really not cut the fuel lines. So I'm not sure. We're gonna stop here and look into the fuel process. Hopefully it's not too bad. And then just a brief update as we're about to pull her off the ramps and take her out, get some heat on the windshield so we can, again, carefully kind of chisel along the front windshield, the rubber get out, and then we just got to break the back one. And then we'll do the same kind of chisel around the edge of that and then uh, sweep it off the shop vac. And then uh, just final things to do. We got uh, just some wiring to clean up front here. You can see the grounds there and different wiring will clean up a little bit. I think I might leave that uh, air box, but I'm not really sure. Might take it off, see if it interferes with it all, and then just the battery box I have loose. And uh, it battery's just sitting there, so I didn't want to take it all the way off. But uh, yeah, that's it inside. Uh, we've got everything taken care of, including, again, uh, if you're more of a, uh, if you will, a, a new person to derbying, um, whenever you are unplugging things, don't ever cut, but unplugging things kill, kill power to the uh, battery, take the terminals off, and then again, the yellow is your, um, any sort of, uh, could be a sensor, but in particular, your airbag. So from the seats to the doors to the roof to uh, under here, you can see that guy there. I just got up under the side and unplugged it. That should be all for this. The steering wheel, the bottom pops off right there, and I could access that. Again, yellow, just unclip it. And then same thing over here. And then there was, again, this wiring kind of runs up in and connects the front of the car to the back of the door with power to the doors, the rear speakers and all that stuff, rear lights. I just unplug that stuff. Again, as you go periodically, put the battery terminals back on, make sure she fires and then you're good to go. And we'll pull all that wiring up. And after we do the glass, what we're gonna do outside so we don't make a mess inside, this guy, we are going to carefully use the Sawzall and kind of cut back the uh, kind of the car there on top of the tank. And that should, the fuel cell just unscrew and pull that out once I disengage the uh, main fuel line there. And then I'm going to cut out with my saws all the top that I need. Again, there's my ring for my, my derby tank so that that will sit in that part of the tank. And then I can bolt through that part of the tank, the top part I'll cut off. And then the fuel cell will just slide back in and tighten down. So we're hoping that works. So that's the plan. We'll do that outside though so we don't make a mess. So last little bit here and then we'll get one more look as we're about ready to finish up. So here we are back in the garage. This is the night before. We're coming in a little bit later than we wanted, but that's all right. We got the ride for our buddy all done and he's set to go. So now we're tidying up this one and hopefully be good. So ended up with the tank. Uh, I believe I finished talking about how I carefully, again, took the saws all and kind of cut that back, pulled it back so I could easily get to the fuel cell, which is sitting right there unscrewed it, which was a little tricky, but I eventually got it to break loose and popped her out. Was going to think about, again, uh, running the star fuel side of this, but we brought back an oldie but a goodie. This is the one I ran in my Cobalt earlier in the year. This was a buddy of mine, Lucas. Shout out to him. He let me borrow it for the Cobalt. Talked with him uh, earlier in the week, and he said, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm just going to sell that. And whenever I saw this mess, and in particular... So both lines, the main line and then the, the overflow line, in essence, the other line come back here. But right here, the overflow or the return line splits and it, it goes into the tank at two different spots after running through some sort of a system. Again, I'm not super familiar with it. Well, what I did, since that wasn't going to work because there's no way with my derby tank I can have two spots on a return. And I could have maybe drilled through the fuel cell, but that was going to be tricky. So what I did is right before it splits the return, I cut it there and then I fed the fuel line, the return into that, which runs to my, be this one here, to my tank here. And then the main line I hooked in right there as well. And you can see right there, you can see I cut a small section out. I'll get on the other side, the light's a little hard to see. Hold on, let's here. But I carefully drilled and then cut out uh, just a section big enough, and I kind of took the pliers and peeled uh, up and down so that it's not as, sh as sharp. 
uh, to get the lines through there. And again, I'll spray foam a little above and below those, not only to secure them, but just to make sure, you know, car, if it bends up that far or anything, it, it won't be cutting into lines. And uh, again, a direct line into the battery. So the positive, again, just carefully uh, got the uh, lines with the little clamps. I don't have any around me, uh, but I just carefully use the clamps and uh, have them bolted there to the to the battery terminal. And again, leave the positive on. I found, figured this out, seems to work better. Leave the positive on, negative, uh, hits on. Doesn't seem to freak it out as much as if you do the opposite, negative on and positive. And uh, as soon as you hit it, the fuel cell is pumping and she fires up. So our fuel setup is good. Again, we're just gonna drill through there. I think I'll be able to use the existing seat hole right there. And uh, we'll get that good and stable. Battery box, we'll put right where that is. Uh, I'll get that here. It's sitting up there with my roof sign. Oh, no, actually, it's sitting right there. My roof sign's up there. Get the roof sign up top behind this, and we're just going to put that fuel cell back in. So I carefully drilled, and again, these drills make sparks. So I carefully drilled in through the bottom and uh, made a hole. I had it up on my car ramp, so I was able to put a gas can under it and pretty much catch all of it. Probably about four gallons I got out that was left in the tank, maybe even closer to five. And uh, what was left there, I just pulled over to a hose, sprayed inside, kind of continued to have it drain out the front, the hole I drilled, again, carefully, spark and gas, not a good mixture. So I just kind of drilled, and as soon as it went in a little, I pulled it back and let off, and then as soon as it went through, pulled it back, and it was draining. Uh, so that's it. We'll just kind of put the fuel cell back in, peel that metal back a little bit so it's not so heinous, uh, but that'll just take a minute or two. And then just tidy up our wires, and uh, the only thing left then would be to press the trunk up. Again, we'll take our jack and do that and then just kind of secure our lines those are just extra lines i'll tape off in the edge and uh, up front only thing really left again we have the line uh the radio or excuse me the transmission line loop there uh these guys will just again electro will tape them real good and just kind of secure them so they're not wiggling around in here the negatives right here positive there just use the u-bolt kind of clamp down through the terminal uh, you don't have to cut them whenever you can get kind of a, a good grip with those and I'd like to run a dummy sensor. I'm not sure if I'll get to that. I'm, I'm going to try though. If I get everything set up and I'm not exactly sure exactly where it is. I believe it's like right in there. So we'll see. And the only other thing I might do, I believe, might just leave that air box there. In fact, I probably will, but I might take that out. But we'll spray foam in around that. Uh, unfortunately, this line here, there's no way really to relocate it. And uh, we'll just kind of secure it. Uh, along there and again put some spray foam and oh and I didn't mention you see how I unbolted the bumper we have our caravan bumper so we'll get that baby welded as well as we can hopefully pretty well and uh, be a little bit tougher up front and then same thing here with our crossbar so that is the plan we're coming in a little hot uh, but we got our buddy all set up and should be able to get this all done just a little bit of a late night so here we go, see if we can get her finished up and then we'll make our final look video before we load her in the trailer. So here's a final look as it is late in the night, actually into the morning, and uh, we're gonna shut her down, but we feel like we got a, a pretty good weld with our uh, caravan bumpers. You can see there a pretty smooth surface, a cut with the sawzall, kind of the top and bottom off, so it'd be more of a a flat and just sticking up over. Uh, they're sticking a little bit, you see right there's the frame rail, they're just a little bit inside of, I'd say where you'd like, but I feel like with the weld, especially on the top and outside that we got, should be good there. And again, I'm more defensive anyways. Was able to get the wiring that was in front, so I just undid that ground there, pulled them all back through, unplugged the fan and another one. And then uh, tomorrow morning I'll secure that, or this morning I should say, <laughs> after we get some shut eye, we'll secure that. Uh, same thing, battery terminals here that we spliced with the U-boats, got those taped up, we'll secure those. I believe I am gonna leave that air box there. Uh, as we get through the final kind of tidbits, I might pop it off and see if there's an issue, but otherwise, that's it. So again, we're gonna leave the stock radiator. We'll put some fabric softener in there, get a nice smell, and also, you know, supposedly helps run it cooler. I think it does. And that's good up front. And then inside the car, we got our tank set. I was able to use the existing bolt. And then uh, the front and back corner here, I bolted in. Uh, used just a 
spare piece of two by four boards is it's kind of got a slope bottom. So that made it pretty flush. Just got to add fuel tomorrow to that. Battery box is in. Again, my foam pieces are there as well as the crossbar that goes across the top. And again, we got our rear bar in here. Uh, good enough weld again, not anything right home. I was a little hot over there, <laughs> melted a little bit too much into the door, but feel like we got a good grip. And again, just kind of put the stock fuel cell back on and flatten that out. So the only thing, only thing we got to do in the morning is just pull the wiring forward and kind of secure it. Um, same thing with the battery line, secure that. Again, that's just excess, I'll round up. And then uh, spray foam up front and uh, just kind of tidy up the lines there. And then just drew our sign, cut our roof sign. We're gonna throw a quick paint job on in the morning. HUD's gonna help me cut out some uh, stencils and then we'll just pop up the trunk. So that's our final look. We're gonna get a little bit of shut eye here. Uh, again, feel like we're in a good spot. Everything's working right. Just gotta get some cosmetic and the outside stuff. And then hopefully she's ready to rip and put together a good run, we'll see.